hey, hey, and welcome back to another learning Java 2D game programming video. So in our last video, we made some editor improvements. So the major thing, of course, was we added the game objects to the minimap as well. So the minimap doesn't look so bare. Um, and also, we made some small quality of life improvements, such as this panning around using the wheel mouse button and multi-selecting our objects so that we can move or delete them in one go. Um, some small improvements. So in this video, we are going to get into unwalkable tiles. So at first, I thought we would just uh, give each tile type a status so that water would be unwalkable and grass would be walkable and things like that. But I was discussing it with my father, who is also a hobby programmer and who is following along with this tutorial. And he said that maybe he would like some water to be walkable. Uh, so we are going to give these tiles a default value, but we're going to make a tool, so a mouse action, that will allow you to flip the state of walkability, I guess, uh, of a tile. So when you place water, it's going to be unwalkable, but you're going to be able to flip for each tile. So if you'd like for a part of this to be walkable, maybe you have a secret. Uh, a secret passage to somewhere in your game, uh, then you're going to be able to do that. And just in the same way, you're going to be able to make these normally walkable tiles unwalkable if for whatever reason you'd like. So that's what's going to happen today. I'm also just going to give you a quick little heads up. So, well, first of all, you can see these lamp posts that I have here. Uh, I have a link in the previous video to where this graphics is and I'll post the same link in the description of this video so that you can download this and use it if you'd like. But um, that's not what I was going to say. What I was going to say is you can see that my map has changed since I showed you or since the last video and there's a reason for that and it's not by my own volition. So currently it of course ends up in this out folder. Um, down here in the maps and this folder is generated by our IDE that when it's building the project or recompiling uh, the project. So what happens is if it rebuilds your project, then it rebuilds everything. That means it just deletes this entire folder and regenerates every all of the contents. Now that's very sad for us because that's where our map ended up, right? So my IDE did that and I lost my map. And so please do make sure to back this up. If you've made something, if you spent a little time on this, back your map up. Um, I put mine inside of a maps folder in my resources folder. So when it rebuilds the project, it will copy this over into here. Uh, but beware, if you're making further changes and saving, then only this one will be saved. So you're going to have to manually back that up. Copy this over to this folder to make sure that you don't lose your progress. So that was a lesson learned, really. That was not fun. But let's move on to today's topic, which will be unwalkable tiles. And since we're going to do the unwalkability, we're going to make it be able to save it, we're going to make that tool, we're going to do a lot of things today, so let's just dive into it. Um, all right, so the first thing is, of course, we're going to need to know if it's walkable or not. So go into your tile and give it a boolean walkable. And I'm going to say walkable is equal to true. Uh, so that will be true in most cases, right? And all of these are going to have take walkable in. So here we're going to say true. We're going to say this dot walkable is equal to walkable. 
Here is the private constructor that we use when we copy something. We also want to get the walkable here. And that was a comma and not a period. All right, so now when we make a copy, uh, we want to get the walkable value of the tile. We don't have that yet, so let's generate, I'm just going to do that below, alt insert getter for the walkable is walkable. So that's what we use during the copy. And we need to also include it when we serialize. So I'm just adding on another delimiter to the string builder and then the walkable value and just uh, when we apply the serialized data now we need to check because our old maps isn't going to have that stored so if tokens.length is larger than three then walkable will be in the last spot so we're taking boolean parse boolean uh, tokens and the third index well the fourth item all right um let's just close that for now and pop over to the game map so here we're gonna need to know the way that we currently have it set up is we have a two-dimensional array of tiles the tiles themselves the object tile doesn't know where it is it does not know where on the map it is. It does not store its own uh, X and Y grids. So to be able to check if we're gonna collide with them, we're gonna ask the game map. So the game map knows everything. It can ask the tile at a certain place, are you walkable or not? So we're gonna make use of that. And I'm actually gonna, let's just go somewhere around here and I'm gonna make a method called this is gonna return a list of collision boxes I'm gonna call this get colliding unwalkable tile boxes and we're gonna send a collision box in so it's gonna check uh, on this collision box and the collision box of course has a position and a size so first, let's find the grid of our collision box. So we're going to have to cast this to an int. Collision box, get bounds, get x, and then divide it by game.sprite size. And then do the same for the y. So now we have the grid position of this collision box that we got. And first, I'm just going to instantiate a list of collision boxes. That is the colliding uh, unwalkable tile boxes. And I'm just going to instantiate that to an empty list. Now, there are some ways that we could do this, but I'm going to look at all of the neighboring tiles uh, on from this one. And I'm going to see, are we colliding with them? And each of the ones that we are colliding with, I'm going to add that collision box to this list. So we have looked at all of our neighboring tiles before. So you're going to recognize this, the way of doing this. So grid x minus 1. Uh, x is smaller than grid x plus 2. And then x plus plus. And then the same for the y. There we go. Now we first must check if we are within bounds. So grid within bounds x and y. And if we are also this tile, and I'm gonna make a get tile wrapper method. So if that isn't walkable, then we're doing something. So let's just make this method now. And I'm not gonna have this to be private. So when we go from the outside, we're also gonna use this. And that's just gonna be tiles 
and x, y. All right, so we are within the bounds. So we know that there is a tile to get. And if that tile isn't walkable, then we need to create a collision box for it. And the tile cannot do that itself because it doesn't know where it's at. So I'm going to say get grid collision, get grid collision box. And we're going to give it the X and the Y. So this will be a new, or rather, maybe we can say, no, no, return a new collision box. And it takes a rectangle, and the rectangle takes an X, a Y, uh, a width and a height. So x times game dot sprite size, y times game dot sprite size, uh, game dot sprite size, game dot sprite size. So width and height. All right, now we have the grid collision box. So now we can check if the collision box that we sent in collides with this grid collision box that we just made then colliding and walkable tile boxes add grid collision box. There we go. And then in the end, we just return this colliding and walkable tile boxes. All right, that's great. We can take a collision box and we will know if we are colliding with any tiles and we will get those boxes. And the reason why we're taking those boxes back is because we want to use the same sort of will collide X, will collide Y that we've used for the game objects. And now we can. So yay for that. Let's maybe pop over and do that inside of the moving entity. So here we are in the moving entity and where we are handling collisions, let's beneath that say handle tile collision. I'm just going to pass in the state. Whoop, that was not supposed to be abstract. So move that and open that up. There we go. So what does handle tile collision mean then? Well, let's ask the game map, get game map, get colliding and walkable tile boxes. And we can do get collision box of this moving entity. And then say for each um, tile collision box, maybe. Uh, let's just put this on its own row. And we'll say motion.stop will collide X with the tile collision box and will collide Y with the tile collision box. Now the problem is the will collide um, methods take game objects, but the only thing that we're doing with them is get the collision box out. So let's refactor this to instead take a collision box. And I'm going to say other box because that's what this was called. And then we can just remove that. Great. So now these should work, but um, just going to hit play because that's going to tell us all the places where we need to update. So here we'll just say other get collision box in here instead. So. Now we were in the player uh, class and we fixed that. And then it's the NPC class. All right, great. And then here we're creating a new tile for get tile set. So now we're in the UI tile menu. Let's just give this get tile set. Let's also take in the walkable. And up here, I'm going to say true for grass, true for concrete, true for dirt, and false for water. And then let's just pass that walkable onto the new tile constructor. 
great. And here is another one. And this is the editor state setup mouse actions. So maybe let's not start with the tile placer actually. Let's start with the scenery tool. So when you enter the editor state, you have the scenery tool um, activated. All right, so now we should at least be able to start our program. Currently, though, everything's going to still be walkable. So we're going to need a way to update that. So let's create. Let's create a way of doing it. So over to the input, mouse, action. I'm going to create a new action. I'm going to call it like tile walkability flipper. Maybe we can always rename it if we want to. And this is a mouse action. I'm going to implement the methods. And what this will do is I'm going to have it on click, actually, I think. So first of all, let's find out what grid are we clicking. So I'm going to say mouse position is equal to position dot copy of and state get input get mouse position. And then to find the position on uh, the map, let's add the camera position. Great. Uh, now we have both of those. Let's find what grid is this then. And that will be mouse position get x. Well, we didn't need to do it like that, right? We already have a helper method for that, so index. And then let's do the same for y. There we go. And then if state get game map grid within bounds grid x because you could be pressing outside of the map right and we don't want our program to crash if you do so if we're within bounds then let's just first of all get the tile so state get game map get tile on this grid x and grid y so for this tile I'm going to say set walkable and we don't have that so not tile dot is walkable so we're just flipping the state of walkable ness <laughs> uh, all right so this dot walkable is equal to walkable there we go now we can flip the state of walkability but we cannot see if it's walkable or not so we're gonna need a way of seeing it actually we're also gonna need a way of setting this as the active tool so let's start by going into the game settings render settings i'm gonna make a new one which i'm gonna call tile walkability uh, and we're not gonna render the tile walkability by default Alt insert, let's make a getter for the tile walkability. All right, so we have that inside the render settings. Great. Now let's go into the renderer and make sure that we can show this if we want. So this we're gonna we're gonna overlay a color. I'm I'm thinking we're overlaying a red color if it's not walkable and a green color if it is walkable. So let's do that when we render map when we render each tile. So I'm going to do it like this. We're going to need these positions several times now. So let's extract those. I'm going to say draw draw position x. And then that was that. And then draw position y. And I'm just going to copy this or cut that out and paste it here. So now we can just say draw position X and draw position Y. And I think it's actually short enough that we can do this in one row now. 
So we're saving a little space, which is good because we're adding some more stuff. So now we know where to start drawing our overlay, but we need to know what do we want to draw. So first of all, we need to check if that setting is on. Uh, and we don't have the render setting. I feel like let's just get that out. Render settings, render settings equal to state, get game settings, get render settings. So we don't have to go all this long way. Let's just say render settings, get tile walkability, get value. So if we have turned on rendering tiles or tile walkability, then do this. We're going to have to get the uh, overlay color and we're going to start by checking the map get tile at X and Y, which we have from this loop. So if that is walkable, then we want a green color, but we want it to be overlay, so we can't just take a green color, but here is the 0 for red, 255 for green, 0 for blue, and then let's give it 75 for its opacity, the alpha. And then if it isn't walkable, then let's do the same, but put the 255 in red. All right, so we have our overlay color. Now all we need to do is fill a rect. And we have the draw position X and the draw position Y. And we know that each tile is sprite size, sized. <laughs> so we need to also set the color, of course. Graphics set color overlay color. There we go. So now if now we should be able to see the walkability state of our map. All right, we need a way to add this um, walkability flipper. And actually, what we could do, we could let this uh, turn that setting on if this tool is active. So you don't um, pick it in the render settings. You don't have a checkbox for it, but uh, this controls that. So let's do it. I'm going to keep the render settings here, I'm going to store it as just a reference here. And then Alt Insert, let's make a constructor and let's take in the render settings. So if we're updating, then we know that this tool is active. So I'm going to make sure that get tile walkability set value to true. And if we're cleaning up, then I'm going to do render settings, get tile walkability, set value false. All right. Now let's find the editor UI. Uh, 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 so editor state UI. And not sure ex where I want to put this, but let's put it in the tile menu. So let's just put it below here for now. It's not going to look great at the start, but new uh, tool toggle, UI tool toggle, and it needs an image. And I made this really, really quick image that I put in this folder called icons. And basically I just used a green and red and took one of the sprites and grayscaled it. So this isn't great and we'll probably switch it out in the future, but this is just so we have something currently to use. To be able to load that in, let's just go to the GFX um, package, sprite library, and I'm just going to duplicate. So load images and I'm going to do it from icons. So now we have this walkable icon that we can use here. So I'm just going to say walkable. And then what tool do we want? Well, we want the uh, walk tile walkability flipper and it takes the render settings, which we don't have. We only have the editor settings. So let's actually get the game settings instead, which means that here we have to say game settings, get editor settings. 
and then we can say game settings get render settings and oh sorry we don't just get the string we of course do sprite library get image walkable there we go all right so now we need to go to the editor state where we create this tile menu because now we need to send in just the game settings so let's try that out I'm gonna press here so here is the button which doesn't look great I'm just gonna load this up I'm gonna press it and here you can actually see it so there is a small problem and that is that I tested this beforehand so I had already flipped all of my water tiles but so there you go now you can flip and put them as walkable or not walkable so yay let's try this out inside of the game also if you turn that off I just right clicked to clear the primary mouse button action uh, you can see that it turned it off so this works awesome just gonna save that go on to play and as you can see people still start here um, and that's because of the get random position it doesn't take uh, the walkableness into account yet and since it's not walkable I don't know if you can see this I cannot walk here uh, since it's not walkable then the NPCs that are that spawned there they're currently stuck so that's something that we're gonna have to fix but uh, there you have it now our uh, water isn't walkable so I guess ray for that uh, I believe we probably used a lot of time so yes this will have to be it for this video. There are still some small fixes that I want to do, but uh, I don't think that I want to have much longer videos. So in the next video, we'll make sure that the NPCs do not spawn uh, on unwalkable tiles and that when they pick new uh, random spots to walk to, they don't pick an unwalkable tile. But, uh, so that's it for this video. Flip all the tiles you want, and I'll see you soon. Hey, though.